வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் தி பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி ஜாயிண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த அப்பர் லிம்ப் ஸ்பெசிஃபிகலி வில் லுக் அட் ஷோல்டர் ஜாயிண்ட் அண்ட் எல்போ ஜாயிண்ட் ஸோ வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் த ரிஸ்ட் ஜாயிண்ட் அண்ட் த ஜாயிண்ட்ஸ் வித் இன் த ஃபிங்கர்ஸ் சர்ப்ரைசிங்லி ஆர் ராதர் அன்சர்ப்ரைசிங்லி த ஹியூமன் ஹேண்ட் has a very large number of bones and a lot of bony articulations these bony articulations are rather the anatomy the morphology the structure gives rise to perhaps gives rise to the enormous dexterity found in humans so it would make sense for us to spend some time to study the hand in some detail so let's get started with our analysis of uh, the bones of the hand so in this video we'll be looking at the bones of the hand the joints within the hand and the types of joints and the movements that are made by these joints there are three major types of bones within the hand the first is the carpal bones these are the most proximal of the bones within the hand and there are eight of these bones and they are not having any particular shape they are irregularly shaped bones irregular shaped bones proximal bones so that is bones that are closest to the wrist joint and these bones called as carpal bones each one of them has a name these are trapezium trapezoid scaphoid bones that are near the the thumb right then more medially in the anatomical reference position when you are looking at more medially you have hamate well actually capitate hamate then more proximally pisiform triquitrum lunate of course you have the ulna and the radius but these form the bones of the forearm these are the uh, forearm bones so here there will be the distal radio ulnar joint remember while we discuss the elbow we discuss the proximal radio ulnar joint right now there is one more joint of the radius and ulna which is called as the again the radio ulnar joint but this is more distal right this is the distal radial radio ulnar joint so the carpal bones are the most proximal of the bones within the hand right so those that are located closest to the wrist right then you have the metacarpal bones those that have articulations with the carpal bones and there are five of these five metacarpal bones these bones don't have a name unlike the carpal bones which are trapezium trapezoid scaphoid hamate capitate pisiform triquetrum and lunate there are eight carpal bones the metacarpal bones are five in number and they don't have a name they are simply called as the first metacarpal second metacarpal third metacarpal fourth metacarpal and fifth metacarpal the metacarpal bone of the thumb is called as a first metacarpal that for the index finger is called as a second third fourth and fifth so on right so 1 2 3 4 5 is assigned from the thumb to the little finger okay so if someone says the fourth metacarpal they are referring to the metacarpal bone of the ring finger okay something to keep in mind then you have the bones within the fingers themselves those that form the segments of the fingers each segment is called as a phalanx the plural is phalanges phalanges each finger except the thumb has three such segments or phalanges so let's take the index finger you have this segment and then this segment and then the distal most segment so the segment that is 
closest to the palm or the most proximal of this segment is called as a proximal phalanx and the one in the middle is called as a intermediate phalanx and the most distal of this is called as a distal phalanx. Okay. The thumb has only two phalanges one is called as a proximal phalanx the other one is called as a distal phalanx there is no intermediate phalanx in the thumb. Okay. So, if I were to count I will have essentially how many uh, phalanges I will have 3 times 4 there are 4 fingers and 3 segments in each of them. So, I will have 12 total phalanges for the 4 fingers and I have 2 more phalanges for the thumb. So, I have a set of 14 phalanges. Right. So, that is that, but uh, that is not counting the special nature of the thumb which we will discuss in the future slides uh, because uh, the nature of the carpometacarpal joint for the digits uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 when I say digit 2, 3, 4, 5 I am talking about index middle ring little the first digit is the thumb. So, the nature of the carpometacarpal joint for the digits 2, 3, 4, 5 or the index middle ring and little finger is very different from the nature of the carpometacarpal joint for the thumb. So, uh, we will have to discuss these details in this kind of work in this kind of uh, field the delight is always in the details. So, let us take the carpometacarpal joint this is where the articulation of the carpal bones and the metacarpal bones happen right. So, this joint is called as a CMC joint CMC means carpometacarpal joint right carpometacarpal joint CMC joint. The articulation is happening between the carpal bones and the metacarpal bones. So, for the thumb for the thumb let us remember this is what we are discussing right this is the this is the carpometacarpal joint for the thumb. It turns out that for the fingers there is very little to no movement that happens at the CMC joint of the 4 digits or digits 2, 3, 4 and 5. However, it turns out for the thumb a lot of articulation a lot of movement originates at the CMC joint a unique feature of the thumb something that we will have to discuss in future. So, the nature of this joint is a saddle joint and ellipsoidal joint right. What about the metacarpophalangeal joint metacarp MCP means the joint or the articulation between the metacarpal bones and the finger segments right. this is the metacarpophalangeal joints or the MCP joints metacarpal MC here there is a P but it is rather metacarpophalangeal joint metacarpophalangeal joint MCP joints. This is where the metacarpal bones meet the finger phalanges or the finger segments these are ellipsoidal joints. Then you have the joints between the finger segments itself or the articulation between the phalanges themselves right. These are the so called interphalangeal joints or the IP joints interphalangeal joints. For the thumb there are only 2 phalanges and there is exactly 1 interphalangeal joint IP joint is 1 in number for the thumb. For the other fingers there are 2 interphalangeal joint one here and one there that is the proximal interphalangeal joint and the distal interphalangeal joint pip joint and the dip joint the joint that is closest to the palm or the more proximal of these joints is called as the PIP joint or the proximal interphalangeal joint the one that is more distal is called as the 
TIP joint are the distal interphalangeal joint. Both of these are hinge joints, meaning that they are going to have one degree of freedom. Okay. Now, let us look at the movements of the joints of the hand. Okay. We start with the carpo metacarpal joint or the CMC joint of the thumb, that is that joint. Remember, that is not on the this joint this is the metacarpophalangeal joint, I am talking about that joint, right? the joint that is closest to the wrist. It turns out that only for the thumb in humans, in particular in humans, only for the thumb, the CMC joint is a unique, very well articulated and highly movable joint, right? it is a saddle joint. And, uh, many of the movements made by the thumb because of the nature of the saddle joint and the amount of movements that are possible within the saddle joint, the movements that are made by the thumb are many times out of the plane of the palm and it turns out that the movements are the plane perpendicular to which this movement is happening keeps on changing because of the nature of the saddle joint and the amount of articulation that is present in this joint. It is an extremely difficult uh, geometry to describe. So, this is the nature of this uh, saddle joint which is highly movable, highly articulated movement within the thumb. Right. So, one movement that we find is the flexion and extension of the thumb that is flexion extension right as shown. Then I have remember we always consider the, the anatomical position when we discuss when the thumb moves away from the midline of the body like that as I am showing now away from the midline it is called abduction it is like kidnapping or abduct to move away from the midline abduction when you move toward the midline it is called adduction. Then you have this movement that you are seeing now which is a combination of the flexion, extension and abduction and adduction that. Actually my thumb movements are somewhat restricted because of uh, a fracture that I had in my scaphoid bone, but, but you can you can try it on yourself you will find that that is that. Then because of the special nature of the thumb and a special muscle available to perform opposition in particular in humans this is a very well developed uh, feature. It turns out that the thumb can perform opposition to the individual fingers like I am now showing this is called opposition movements. Right. So, that is that movement. This is also a combination of flexion extension and, and abduction reduction right, depending on in which direction you are moving toward the digit or you are moving away from the digit. It is a combination of the two uh, this. Perhaps all of this come from the nature of the saddle joint of the CMC or the uh, carpometacarpal joint such a very well movable joint. For the other fingers what happens at the CMC joint right. Technically uh, you know these are not very well movable joints, so you can do that this is the movement that happens at the CMC joint you know uh, as a whole, but individually it is very difficult to move individual fingers like that. Uh, a reason is because there is this lack of finger individuation something that we will discuss in future. So, that flexion extension is possible. This is an again an ellipsoidal joint, this, this CMC joint. Then you have the metacarpophalangeal joint in which there is a, a lot more of this uh, articulation present, a lot more of this movement that can be visibly seen, right. That is uh, that movement 
process that moment flexion and extension and also I can do that see when I am keeping like this when I am moving the index finger away from the midline like that when I am doing that it is abducted away I can also do that right I can do that abduction of the fingers and adduction of the fingers. This is possible because of some special muscles that are responsible for abducting this for performing that movement right that happens at the that happens at the metacarpophalangeal joint which is a 2 degree of freedom. So, I can do that I can do that that is I can do this sort of movement I can also do that sort of movement sideways movement which is abduction adduction and flexion extension I can do that. So, it is a 2 degree of freedom joint of course, I can do this right the circumduction which is which can be classified as a combination of flexion extension and abduction adduction I can do this. Remember you can only do this at the MCP joint at the metacarpophalangeal joint you cannot for example, do it at uh, the interphalangeal joint that is not possible because the interphalangeal joints are hinge joints with 1 degree of freedom remember that you cannot rotate like this at this try to do that you will realize that it is impossible. Then you have the proximal interphalangeal joint this is where the proximal phalanx and the intermediate phalanx or the middle phalanx meet this is a hinge joint in which there is flexion you can extend up to a limit, but extending beyond that uh, limit anatomical range is not possible. So, or rather what one would call as hyper extension is not possible at least not in the pip joint proximal interphalangeal joint. So, a lot of flexion is possible a lot of flexion is possible, but a limited amount of extension is possible ok. So, flexion extension like this I can do that. Then you have the distal interphalangeal joint these are these joints right. In these joints again this is a hinge joint I can perform it is quite difficult to demonstrate this flexion, but uh, you can observe I can perform minimal flexion uh, flexion like that and extension flexion extension like that. One thing that is possible in the dip joint, but not in the pip joint is this sort of hyper extension I can actually push with an external force with the left finger I am pushing on the right finger like that this is possible this is some hyper extension that is happening at the dip joint, but that is not possible at the pip joint. So, something to keep in mind. So, extension or voluntary extension is rather limited in both the interphalangeal joint hyper extension through an external load is possible at the dip joint, but not in the pip joint ok. So, with this uh, we come to the end of this video in this video we have seen the set of all bones of the hand what are these bones the carpal bones that are 8 in number that are closest to the wrist here and the metacarpal bones that are 5 in number that at that attach or that articulate with the carpal bones each one of these metacarpal bones is called the first metacarpal second metacarpal third metacarpal fourth metacarpal and fifth metacarpal but the carpal bones have names trapezium trapezoid scaphoid etc right then you have the after the metacarpal bones you have the finger segments themselves these are called as the phalanges segments are singular is phalanx plural is phalanges right the phalanges these are 3 in number for the 4 digits digits 2 3 4 5 and 2 in number for the thumb and the corresponding metacarpophalangeal joints earlier when when we discuss carpal carpal metacarpal joint then metacarpal phalangeal joint and then the interphalangeal joint there are two such joints for digits 2 3 4 5 and only one such joint for the thumb. So, these are the various bones that are present in the hand how many let us try to do this math one more time carpals 8 metacarpals 5 then phalanges 3 per finger for the 4 fingers 12 
then thumb phalanges 2 14 plus 13 the math correct there are 27 bones in each hand and many of these bones are highly movable and possible to articulate extraordinarily well some of them are not very movable yes but some of them are highly mobile which is why you have this dexterous highly dexterous machine that is the wonder that is the human hand. So, we saw the bones of the hand the joints of the hand and the types of these joints and the movements that happen within these joints of the hand. So, with this we come to the end of this video thank you very much for your attention.